So this is a related topic as Dimitri already introduced. It is about the benefit and cost analysis of a uh, wind turbine. So um, here we will go into a bit more details of uh, also partly uh, of things partly covered in Sebastian's presentation. Um, so the cost benefit analysis is, is essential to value of information analysis uh, for the simple fact that we somehow need to account for the economics and uh, in, in our value of information to see the benefit or the costs of one scenario compared to another or further scenarios. Um, playing big parts uh, in, in this analysis are of course um, the uh, financial circumstances which could be the uh, interest rate we need uh, to discount, the uh, future earnings we have uh, to a known so current value of, of uh, money um, there are other uh, uncertain aspects uh, like the future energy prices in terms of a uh, power generation system like wind uh, turbines. And of course, uh, these um, economical systems are also influenced by uh, different types uh, of, of, um, of environments. So we can have uh, subsidy schemes that may be changing. Um, we can have uh, different market fluctuations, new technologies emerging. Um, the system might be sold. And uh, all these things can be relatively simply modeled, um, but there are things that are quite uncertain in these models, at least uh, if you uh, are not an expert in these uh, specific fields. So here we have uh, some examples of, of values that could um, constitute such a model. So very important, first of all, are the basic investments, the capital expenditures. Uh, that is in principle, the construction cost uh, for such a wind turbine here expressed in euros per kilowatt. Then we have a interest rate, uh, interest rate which is uh, an assumption because we do not know the future. How will it develop? Um, here it is assumed to be 5%, which is a rather common value. And uh, then, of course, again, operational costs which might also vary for the specific uh, system you're looking at. Then uh, here the capacity factor of 50% and availability of 90%. And uh, of course, very important to know how much we can earn from the system, of course, is also its uh, maximum output. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have already observed uh, very much is the change of, of energy prices. Uh, we have seen a strong increase of energy prices in the last uh, decade, but then also uh, just one and a half, two years ago, a sudden drop again due to the uh, oil price drop. So this is also a big source of uncertainty we are looking at. So uh, I will give you three different examples. Um, we have uh, a rather grim example with a energy price of just two and a half uh, cents per kilowatt hour um, or a uh, decent or a rather higher price or a, li a li slightly higher price of 3.9 cents per kilowatt hour and uh, a quick analysis of the last uh, 14 years has uh, resulted in a, a third quantile value of, of the energy prices discounted again with 5% of uh, 67.5 uh, uh, cents per kilowatt hour. So this is uh, then the range you can see at the moment we had this as a not infrequent value of energy prices in the last one and a half decades. Um, and at the moment we are somewhere in between here. Um, discounting, the other very uncertain factor in uh, the model that is presented um, has also a very strong effect on the benefit uh, we can generate with such a turbine. So here you see in the graph the uh, discount rate as it's changing over time with different interest rate. So uh, you could basically assume this would be one monetary unit or just uh, one uh, without unit. And you see 
as uh, here as uh, time progresses, we have uh, a decrease of, of value of this uh, starting value. Or in other ways, we can also use this to calculate the current value of future earnings. This is uh, given here in this example. If you imagine you will receive 100 euro from a person in a year, uh, you can calculate this way how much value this 100 euro in a year will have for you today. Um, simply by assuming an interest rate here, 5%, and then it would show you, okay, it is about 95%. Uh, euro. <laughs> Um, so the three examples um, we are looking at are uh, actually six. Um, we are considering two different markets, the Danish energy market and the German energy market. Um, the Danish subsidy scheme is uh, based on a, a tender plan. So the successful bidder is guaranteed for uh, 50,000 full load hours a subsidy or a, a guaranteed price uh, or guaranteed uh, feed-in fee. And this depends on what the successful bidder said uh, I want to have from you, what I want to have guaranteed. So it could be uh, a rather courageous bidder and says I just want to have uh, five cents per kilowatt hour guaranteed or it could be uh, a higher value. So here uh, we have an assumption of a higher value. You see the red line is at uh, 14.5 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, then we have two German models. Uh, this will, these models will also change um, to a more Danish-like model in the future. But the current system is that the government has a initial subsidy phase with very high subsidies, um, either the 12-year-long uh, phase, which guarantees 15.8 cents, or a, a higher scheme that guarantees 19.8, 18.9. Not sure about that at the moment. Uh, and afterwards, we have then a second subsidy phase uh, up to 20 years that uh, has a rate of 3.9 cents. So that's why you, will, you see these different steps. And this will also influence, of course, the profits that can be made with the produced energy. Um, here we see it, the, uh, the profits we will earn. Uh, this is already the uh, income from the energy produced subtracted, uh, or the, the costs subtracted from the income that is produced. So the operation costs have been taken out of this graph. And then we see uh, a steep increase until this first uh, kink in the graph. This is when the subsidy uh, ends. And uh, the gray line here, that is uh, marking the capital expenditures. So this is after reaching this line, uh, the system has generated overall profit. So, and here in the end, you see uh, six different lines. They uh, diverge into uh, the different uh, price regions we have. So from, from the low price with uh, just 25 euros per megawatt hour, sorry, the age is missing, up to 65.5. Uh, um, what is very important here to uh, recognize is the uh, influence of the energy price we see here on the lifetime extension. Um, so it's uh, also sensitive not only to the information I have about my system, how uh, reliable it is in the end, uh, and will, will I need to invest a lot of money to keep it going, but also, of course, how much money will I earn with it. And uh, here we see different scenarios. In all these three scenarios, we are making a profit. So this is the return over investment, the ratio of returned money over my initial investment. And we have values ranging from about 13% uh, return to a increase over 10 years only of 14, 15%, just one or 2% more uh, for the uh, assumption of a very low energy price. With the slightly higher price, we see already a big jump of uh, five, two percent and uh, high energy prices, we see an increase of 
uh, almost 15 percent. So this has a big influence and is one of the big uncertain factors, how will the energy price develop? It can of course be that during the uh, initial subsidy phase, the energy prices are low and then they will increase and the operator is uh, very happy about the situation um, or due to effects like uh, currently the low oil prices, if this uh, scheme continues, um, the energy prices or the electricity prices might of course also be low and the spot market price that is achieved here might be more in the lower area. Um, so as I told you already, this uh, is a um, tool that can be almost uh, immediately used. Um, uh, there's a spreadsheet available where you can, if, if you use this model, just enter the numbers you need and uh, it will generate um, the return of investment and uh, costs you will have and, and profits. And it's also um, easily adjustable to, to similar cases. Um, it uh, can be transformed maybe to a bridge where you have um, uh, road tolls in place instead of energy that is produced uh, and of course other maintenance costs and investment costs. Um, so the adjustment is relatively easy, straightforward to other systems where maybe the uh, uncertainties uh, are lower. Um, what would be very helpful from the network uh, is some additional insight on the uncertain values in this model. At the moment, uh, to us it is quite unclear how to uh, predict on a, um, yeah, on a reliable basis or on, on, on an established basis the uh, future energy prices. Um, how can we maybe adjust um, the, the outlook uh, we will achieve from, from this model um, with, with new information, I don't know, on uh, the action that OPEC might uh, limit the oil production, that there will be an uh, export embargo on, on an energy producing country, um, or the, um, the interest rate. At the moment, uh, when we look at the, again, the banking markets, the interest rates there are negative actually. So banks lending money to uh, other banks lose money by lending it. Um, on the other hand, of course, we know that, that companies still make a profit. So uh, where is uh, where's the ideal way to establish a, a interest rate to discount for the earnings and uh, spendings in such a model? Thank you very much. Thank you.